I'm going to be reviewing the total amount of ATP molecules that can be produced from beta oxidation using palmitoyl CoA. In beta oxidation, each cycle will produce one molecule of acetyl CoA, except for the last cycle, which will produce two molecules one FADH2 molecule and one NADH molecule. Both NADH and FADH2 will go to the electron transport chain, while the acetyl-CoA molecule will go through the Krebs cycle and produce NADH, FADH2, and GTP. For each molecule of acetyl-CoA that enters the Krebs cycle, it will produce three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of GTP. For palmitoyl CoA, since it has 16 carbons on its chain, each time it goes through beta oxidation, it will lose two carbons at a time. So it will go from a 16 carbon chain to a 14 carbon chain to a 12 carbon chain and so forth. Each time it goes from 16 to 14 is one cycle of beta oxidation. From 14 to 12, is two cycles of beta oxidation. From 12 to 10, it's gonna be three and so forth. And so if we add these up, we get seven cycles of beta oxidation. Therefore, we need to multiply the number seven to the products that are produced from beta oxidation, with the exception of acetyl-CoA, in which we will add an additional molecule. So we have seven molecules of NADH, seven molecules of FADH2, and eight molecules of acetyl-CoA. Now these eight molecules of acetyl-CoA ends up going into the Krebs cycle, so we will need to multiply eight with the number of products produced in the Krebs cycle. So we have eight times three for NADH, eight times one for FADH2, and eight times one for GTP. And so um, we're also taking note of the molecules of ATP that have been used up during the process. So for beta oxidation, we used two molecules. We don't use any for the Krebs cycle. So we just add up all the molecules totals that we've used for beta oxidation and the Krebs cycle. So we have eight times three plus seven is 31 for NADH. We have eight plus seven is 15. Eight plus zero is eight, two plus zero is two. Now, we need to convert these molecule numbers into ATP. And to do so, we need the following conversions. So for NADH, one molecule of NADH produces 2.5 molecules of ATP. Therefore, we're gonna multiply 31 molecules of NADH by 2.5, which will give us our total of ATP molecules, 77.5. For FADH2, each molecule produces 1.5 molecules of ATP. So we're gonna multiply 15 molecules of FADH2 by 1.5, which will give us a total of 22.5. Next, for each molecule of GTP is converted into one molecule of ATP. Therefore, we multiply eight molecules of GTP by one molecule of ATP, which will give us eight. So next we just add all the total numbers of ATP produced minus the ATP that was, was used up. So we subtract that and we get a total of 106 molecules of ATP produced for this molecule.